Hola, gringas and gringos, and welcome to Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. I'm Mark. I'm Gina. This week, we're going to show you our first little impressions of San Luis Potosi. Mm -hmm. Coming up next. So welcome back. So this video is really our initial first impressions of San Luis Potosi, maybe like the first week we were there. Yeah, before all the crap hit the fan. <laughs> before the computer and everything, yeah. yeah. So, when, life, when life was normal in SLP and we were just going out <laughs> at night and taking a nightly walk and right. getting a churro and right. taking a nightly walk and getting a churro. And getting a churro. But we walked a lot of the Testiski upon uh, neighborhood and never felt uncomfortable anywhere we were walking. Nope. And we were lucky enough that we got to meet and become friends with Mark and Paulette from the Two Travelers Mexico. And they took us on a kind of preliminary walk down to Centro. Mm -hmm. And we went out to dinner, had a really good time, which you will see in the video. But... Before we get to that, why don't we talk about where we were li where we were living, basically. We had an apartment, if you see from our previous video, the which Airbnb. will be right up here. Mm -hmm. We got an Airbnb, it was literally on the fourth floor. It was a walk up with no elevator. Um, it was small yeah. and it was a little dusty. <laughs> it was what it was. It, it was. it was comfortable. Yes. It was convenient, had a great terrace, and the location couldn't be beat. But I mean, we were two, two to three blocks from everything we needed in life, and we were close to the Jardin del Tequisquiapan. I cannot talk. We were right there at the Jardin del Tequisquiapan. <laughs> you can't talk either. <laughs> Tequisquiapan. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's where we were, and the nice part was is, other than right in the neighborhood itself, the sidewalks, we had not encountered sidewalks like that anywhere. Nope. Anywhere nope. Nope. in Mexico up to that point. Well, why don't we show the video? We can do that. And when we're done, we're going to wrap up exactly what our first impressions were. Enjoy.
Is that a church? It is. That's the most modern looking church I've seen in all of Mexico. It is. very close to where we're residing at the moment. One block away. And something that we commented on earlier amongst ourselves is well, how refreshing it is to see Families children. and children out playing and laughing and having fun. Yeah. And it's a regular occurrence here. Yes. I mean, it's enjoyable just to walk and watch them. And we saw it today in the Puebla that we were in mm -hmm. and it's here in the Jardin and it's just very heartwarming to see this occur. Agreed. I wonder if we can find some mosquitoes. I don't know. Let's see. The search is on. <laughs> Guys, I think he's hooked. This is his third churro. Good shit. have gotten into the habit since we arrived of trying to take a stroll in the evenings heading down to the Hardeen churro Mark is now obsessed with the churro but look how wide this street is this is a one-way street this is a wide street and unlike the streets right in front of the Hardeen which is, yes, it is cobblestone, but it's the very large square ones. This is blacktop. We're actually looking for a lavanderia. A pile of garbage that is piled in the street. Now, yes, this is a thing here. This is how they do their garbage collection. Everybody puts the garbage out on the street. Notice it's not really tore up. That's because there's not that many street dogs running around in San Luis Potosí. And they'll pick that trash up about three days a week. We found it. Good job, Mr. Human GPS. Of course, they're not open right now. We knew they wouldn't be. But looks like they are open. Nine in the morning. To eight at night. All kinds of balloons. Balloons. And ultrasounds and gynecological exams. And then we're walking by here and we noticed it's a gymnasium. Check that out. Oh, there's a sign right here. For the gym. Right there. So ahead of us, I don't know if I can get them, we've been seeing a lot of Mormon missionaries in the neighborhood every day, usually in a group of three, three young men, short white sleeve shirts and ties, local businesses across the street. Yeah, the jewelry store. Two things that get to each other's hearts. What's that, food, 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 food and jewelry? Jewelry for the women. 
So the thing is, we never walked like this because we never had anywhere yet that we could really walk no. to. Well, I'm really bouncy right now. Sorry, we're on some cobblestone. But we never had some place we could walk to. Nope. So this is nice. We have a pedestrian route anywhere we decide to head out. If we kept walking this direction, we would be in Centro in like a, a 20 minute walk. Yep. Basically. In fact, I'm not even sure right now how far Centro is. Probably about five blocks from here. Uh, probably. You want to walk to Centro? Nah. Okay. But the nice refreshing thing, because this is the first place we've been where not only are the streets wide, and in some cases the sidewalks are really wide, but it's all flat. There's and, no. And, and we're at the highest elevation that we've been at yet. Yes. But this, it is flat. This is flat, it's easily walkable. Very nice. Hey, we found an OXO. We're heading in to get some drinks. Yeah, right over here. Right over here. What am I going to get? Chocolate, cinnamon, mocha, vanilla, original, Irish cream, uh, marzipan, I think that's like almond. Ooh, abuelita. Mmm. Linguero, I don't know what that is. And then latte. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. Original. There we go. Perfect. Now I just need to find the lid. Well, thank you, honey. I appreciate that. Let's see if I can get it on there. With one hand. Ooh, that's hot. I'm gonna need a cup holder too. Okay. Uh, cappuccino? Or you have? Gracias. Ooh, what happened here? What? That's interesting. <laughs> like an extra piece. Like to haul to haul stuff. Like, literally took the back end of something and made a trailer out of it. Very cool. Ingenious engineering. Okay. Oh, Ooh, little puppy. Yeah. Made me jump. No taste. So I would say, and I'm going to be honest here, if I was on a street that looked like this in the United States... Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. It wouldn't happen. Because in the United States, that would be considered basically a section of town that doesn't get any attention, probably has high crime, and just and dangerous in general. Red flag. Yeah. So, you know, but in Mexico, I mean, people are out walking. They're out walking. They're out selling their tamales and esquites and, I mean, it's nothing. That's not to say that there are some neighborhoods you need to not be in. But 
but you can't go by appearance alone. No. If this was the United States, they'd be like, mm, I'm not going down that road. <laughs> See, now we're going to get to this part where the sidewalk literally gets so small that it will not even hold one person. Like, right up here. It'll barely hold. It's still getting more narrow. Like, right here, we got a window jutting out. Now we've got a rock. Yeah. That happens. But I've got to say, so far in every place we've been in Mexico, San Luis Potosí has the widest selection of sidewalks in general. This is what I'm talking about now. It's either going to look like this or it's these square blocks. And yeah, you do still feel it, but it's not like, uh, not like the round part, like those really bumpy round stone type cobblestone roads that are hard to walk on even and harder to drive on yeah and look guys they have parking meters here in some places not everywhere but they do have them so over there we have uh some medical That's facilities yeah, but I mean, there's medical here, yeah. right here, and then, look at these doors, these are old doors, I mean, look, stand by one of them doors, just, I mean, that's normal height, then you stand over here next to this one, I think this might be a garage though, I think this is a garage. Yeah, but still. And then in here, this is interesting. This is a fancy parking lot. For the hospital. Is that what it's for? Yeah, the bin. Okay. San Luis, then that is okay. the bin. So again, here's our medical cons consulting. And then there's this building in the middle, which could potentially be maybe doctor's offices or things, I don't know. And then the hospital is right there. So going most of the way down the street, that's all hospital and stuff. And then over here, on the right, this large building right here, we found out this is the Spanish consulate office. There's a sign down here. So again, we're only a few blocks away from the hospital. If we needed medical attention, that's, we're in a nice location. You know, we just passed a couple of security officers. I can't tell you if they're there for the hospital or if they're there for the consulate. Don't know. I think it's more hospital. Okay. But they were there the other night as well. I don't know what this is on the corner. I should look it up on Google Maps and find out. It's beautiful though. Could be more doctor's offices, you're right. So this is part of the medical as well, in some way. Don't know. Or administrative offices or... Yeah. It's really pretty though. All right, well, we're actually only a few blocks away, so I'm just gonna shut it down for now. And there you have it. So, first impressions. Loved it. Loved it? Um, yeah. It had a unique mix of old Mexico 
but yet had a influence from New Mexico. Yeah. Not not the state, but I mean, you know, it just was. There were a lot of of stores and tiendas that were modern. Yeah. Sprinkled in with the old parts of of archi old Mexican architecture. Yeah. So it really is a hybrid city. I guess is the I, best I, I way of true. saying it. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, shopping wise, everything was available. Supermercado wise, I mean, H E B, Shadrawi. Uh, uh, we had a couple HEBs. We had a Soriana, we had a Sam's, and a Costco. Yep. Everything you need from modern shopping to your simple Mercado uh, bodega type locations. And traffic really wasn't that bad. It's, um, a, it's a, one of the 15th largest cities in Mexico, so traffic really was not that no. bad. It no, wasn't. I think the, the worst part about traffic, other than everybody wants to honk their horns, is New York South. Um, but I think the, the worst traffic wise was actually when we came in and when we left getting to the carretera, that was pretty, I mean, it was a, it was a travel route used by a lot of yeah. commercial truckers. Yes. So, but yeah, nowhere else in Mexico up until that point, had we heard anybody lay on their horn, but they like to use their horn in San Luis Potosi. <laughs> yep. Not not obnoxiously. Nope. But just, they do use it. Yes, they do. <laughs> you know, um, but other than that, no, it was it was very eye opening as to uh, the cleanliness, the beauty, and mm -hmm. the overall walkability of this city oh, is phenomenal. I it's mean, it's flat. We walked no from hills. Just you know, from our Airbnb right. all the way down to the, the main parochia mm -hmm. and back. And I think that was 15, 16,000 steps that day. And it was, it's a, it's a good walk, but. But an easy walk, despite the elevation. Mm -hmm. Also the highest elevation we've ever been. Yep. So that combined with the flatness made it a very walkable city, regardless of elevation. Mm -hmm. um, Flat surfaces. Yes. There, there is some cobblestone, but it's not that big, bumpy, walky cobblestone that you may imagine when you think of San Miguel de Allende or Ajijic. It is cobblestone in some places, but it's a flatter, more and uniform. There were, there were a few, yeah. few roads that had the, the old style mm -hmm. San Miguel cobblestone, but mm -hmm. it would maybe have been for a block or two. But the rest of that yeah. was pretty much easy driving um, that main drag that goes right past uh the Hardeen. Hardeen, they actually close it i believe it's on sundays, sundays and everybody can ride bikes skateboard roller skate on that road yep which is pretty cool but we missed that but it's still cool <laughs> um yeah i um i think it is a city that that is going to rank probably high on our list um there'll For be sure. some serious conversation about possibly even doing a second visit to San Luis since we were only there for four weeks and part of that time was dealing with the crisis. So, the computer. Yeah. And I wasn't there for a whole week dealing with that. So I, I feel like we didn't spend enough time there and we should definitely consider another visit. And it is definitely high up on our list. So, and what about the airport? You got to go in the airport. Okay, so the airport in San Luis, uh, what I noticed about the airport is that it seems like it may be larger than Queretaro's airport. It was really hard to tell, but it was on two levels. I don't recall Queretaro's airport being on two levels. I think it was just one. I think it was just one. But this one was on two levels. Uh, they were very, very restrictive when it comes to people who are on international flights. It didn't matter if you were a Mexican national or not. You had to go to the aduana essentially, yeah, the, the aduana or I in it, either way, you had to go and get your passport and your airline ticket stamped just to even get through security and get onto a plane and everybody checked it. Security checked it. When they were letting you board the plane, they checked it. Um, so, you know, their security is really high there and it was a very nice airport actually. Uh, with the exception, and maybe this is just my luck in the flight I got, you had to go out on the tarmac to board and deep board the plane. Gee, just like when we were kids. Basically, yeah. 
So if they didn't have one of those gate tunnel things like a lot of airports will have, um, not an issue. Now, if it had been raining, that might have been a problem. <laughs> but uh, no, nice airport. I have to say it was a very nice, clean, efficient airport. And it was fairly easy for the drive from mm -hmm. where we were to the airport. It may have taken 20, 25 minutes. I mean, by the time I got a text from her that she was at the gate, I was pulling into the yeah to the uh airbnb again so that was pretty quick of course it was also very early so there wasn't a whole lot of traffic on the road so there you have it initial impressions yep now we did make a trip uh another video of its own on a trip to centro doing centro type touristy things uh, with our group that you may have seen in the video where six expats talk which two travelers in mexico released on their channel it was actually recorded on that same day. We all yep. took a trip into Centro, and we're going to share that with you in the next drop. <coughs> that works. That's it. So thank you for tuning in today. We really appreciate the astronomical growth that we've seen yes. lately. Incredible. And we'd like to thank each and every one of you for giving us some of your time in the day and just watching our journey with us. Absolutely. And we will <coughs> see you hopefully on our next live that comes up every two weeks on a Wednesday evening. And this week, we're traveling again. <laughs> we are. Hard we're, to believe it, but... We're on the move, and I'm not telling you where. <laughs> we will give you a teaser coming up in the next couple days as to the next location so that you have an idea. Indeed. So thank you once again for tuning in. Remember, we are Gringos Are Us. Expats with a plan. We, we are, are doing, doing it. it. You, you can, can too. too. Hasta la próxima. Adios. And here's a couple of videos that you might want to watch. <laughs>